Good evening, everyone. We've already got some people joining us. Just want to say hello to those. Just going to make sure I can see your comments here. So if you are joining us, just say hi. Um, hey, Jennifer, how are you? Hello. Yes, it's Heather joining me tonight. So yes, hello, hey, welcome. Hey, hey Lorene, how are you? Lorene doesn't get to see enough of us during the day, obviously. Hi, Julie. No. Hi, Matt, and Andrea. Lots of people joining. Great. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Hello. Yes, so this is the second week in a row I've had someone from my creative team join me. Um, I just thought it would be good to introduce you to some of our people from our, our creative team. So last week was Nancy. Tonight, it's Heather. So, yeah, say hello, Heather. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Heather's in her craft room. I'm in my craft room. Yes. yes. Oh, Andrea from Pennsylvania. Hello, Andrea. Pennsylvania. Thank you That's for joining cool. us. So just a little introduction for Heather. Heather and I have known each other. We were discussing this eight or nine years. Yep. Eight, eight or nine years. So Heather and I have a bit of a history. We worked together at the paper at no, the paper Nick boutique. No, <laughs> Scrapbooker's Paradise. She and I worked together at Scrapbooker's Paradise, and we're there on the last day, and locked the door when it shut forever. So that's how far back our relationship goes. And and then we started Paradise Lost Crops, which some of your names I've seen popped up. Um, also know Heather and I from Paradise Lost Crops, which Heather still runs. Um, I'm going to put up the banner about Paradise Lost Crops. Do you want to just talk a little bit about what that is? Uh, so Julia and I started Paradise Lost Crops uh, fall of 2014 um, and continued to do it together until Julia and Glenn opened the store. And then... Um, I decided just to carry on with it. It was such a great group of ladies. Uh, we meet, I generally host a crop once a month, um, a two-day crop, and then a couple times a year I do like a big four-day one. Um, have a great following, fantastic ladies. Just um, last couple of years have been a challenge, but we're back at it now, so thankful for that. So, yeah, check me out on uh, Facebook there. Julia put the handle up. Um, you can reach me there, message, um, send me an email. Yeah, that's the other side of what I do. Because she's not busy enough. No. <laughs> and at the four-day crops, you'll see the paradise or the paper and ink boutique there with a mobile store for the four-day uh, retreats that she does. So yeah. always yeah, a lot of happy fun. To have the pop-up shop. Yes, the pop-up shop. Okay, so yeah, definitely give Paradise Lost YYC a follow if you're interested in doing a crop if you live in the Calgary area. Um, and also, if you see one and there's availability, sign up, don't wait, because they always fill up. Always, right? Time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, Heather came to work for us. A little over a year ago, she is our assistant store manager at the store. But before that, um, she would also um, do classes. And when COVID hit and we weren't really teaching, Heather started doing a lot of our take and makes. And they are fabulous take and makes. And I know a lot of you have, have bought those kits. Oh. <laughs> What is going on? Hi, Glenn. Um, a lot of you have bought her take and make kits. Yeah, Glenn's here. Hello, everyone. <laughs> the work never <laughs> ends. <laughs> um, so Heather also does our take and make kits. So yeah, she is absolutely fabulous with those. Um, I have put out Heather's Instagram handle because also, if you didn't know, Heather is also on a design team. Well, whose design team are you on? Um, I'm currently on my second term for the Jennifer Edwardson um, creative team that was just announced today. So I'm grateful for that. And I'm also on the Paper and Ink Boutique design team. So she yeah, so does you can a lot of... A lot, of, lot of crafting. So my evenings are generally spent in my craft room for sure. <laughs> okay, so that's a little bit about Heather. Um, and if you want to see some of her take and makes, 
Um, you can find them on our website, on our store. She actually has a new one that's going to be posted either later tonight or tomorrow. I've seen it. I've shown it on my Facebook Live. It's amazing. And you. you can also see a lot of what Heather creates on her Instagram, which is Heather Heather's underscore paper creation. So if you want to follow Heather on her social media, give that a follow because she will be posting lots of inspiration on there. Plus, she also posts a lot in the Paper and Ink Inspiration Group as well. Right. Okay, let's get going. We are, I'm going to put our, our um, overhead cameras up here. Uh, let me, okay, this is my overhead camera. Oops, just a second. Let me just remove that banner here. There we go. So tonight we are going to be talking about pace. And the word paste really is quite, you know, general. There's texture paste. We've used those for a lot of years. There's crystal paste. This is one from Sizzix. I'll be talking about that one in a minute. We've got crackle paste, which are absolutely amazing. And I've got the white and the gold one from Stamperia. And I forgot to go back to my comments. Here we are. Uh, modeling paste. So that's sort of like this. It is a little bit different. And then I also brought a selection of stencil butters, which is another uh, paste, but they like to call it a butter. Now I'm going to show you Heather because I think Heather has some different ones that I do, uh, that I have. Yep. So what ones do you have on hand, Heather? Okay. So you can see me there. So this Glitter Kiss um, Cosmic Shimmers, the different ones like this, they also act as a good paste, um, especially like through stencils and whatnot. Um, of course, like the stencil butters, paper glazes, that kind of stuff. Um, I also really like the Nouveau um, Glimmer Paste um, they, and Glacier Paste. These are excellent. I love these. Um, Lawn Fawn, we currently have, I think, four different um colors with lawn fun right now this one is fairy dust crystal glaze um i'm going to show you something with this one tonight too this is the transparent gloss texture paste and yeah it's kind of endless really <laughs> there's a lot of paste now i do want to uh you just were talking about the lawn fawn one there heather Yes. Um, we do have one that we've never carried, but is coming in this week is the clear um, paste from Lawn Fawn. And it works really well with their uh, raindrop stencil. It looks like crystal raindrops. It's absolutely beautiful. So that one oh, yeah. is coming if anyone's wondering about that. Okay. Now, Heather, because she's Heather and she's very organized and such, has some samples to show, right? Yeah, let's run. Well, let's run through those and I'll explain what I've used um, just to give you some ideas uh, before we get started with some creating. OK, the other thing I wanted to show you and it's not actually a paste. Uh, you see this? OK, so this layout I did as a sample for uh, Maker Mania, the, the last one, number four, I guess. And this here in the corners is with a stencil. And it's actually not paste. It was one of these Sizzix acrylic paints. So don't be afraid to try like your paints or different mediums and whatnot. I actually just finished with a really nice uh, dimension. And yeah, it worked wonderful. So keep that as an idea too. We have a ton of these in stock with fabulous colors. So I've been using these on my scrapbook pages actually. And so some paints that. are some paints are better um, than others. Like the Sizzix creamy paints are a bit thicker. Yeah, I find the Sizzix is better because yeah, it's thicker, so it works better with your stencils versus a Dina, thinner acrylic paint. Yes, and the Dina Wakely heavy body paint are also really good mm -hmm. as well. Uh, before we carry on, I yeah. just want to say I am following your comments. So if you have any questions. Um, put them in the comments and I can pop them up on the screen and Heather and I can answer them. So go ahead, Heather, continue on. Okay, so uh, this sample here, this was, I just ink blended the background and through a stencil, I used 
my Nouveau Glimmer Paste in Moonstone. So you can see that. You get that really nice glitter effect, which I love. So there's something like that. Um, another ink blended background. And this is with the gold uh, Nouveau Glacier Paste. See, so you get just a bit of dimension and some add some texture to your card fronts. Just adds so much. Um, here we have a uh, crackle paste. Nouveau, no. Julia, who makes this one again? You see that? With the stencil and uh, yeah. That, so just a it, it could be um, one of the creative expressions ones. Yeah, like I can't Nouveau, remember, Nouveau. but it may. Mm -hmm. Yeah such a cool crackle once it's dry and i always find with any paste it's better to let them air dry versus using your heat tool it just they seem to dry better right they don't warp or bubble or whatnot we have a question um, here from victoria uh does okay. the nouveau dry out as quickly as the glitter kiss heather's a good one because she has a special way of sealing her jars so that they don't dry out there's a fine line with pace, and I honestly believe anything with like a sheen or gl glitter, um, once you open them, use them. Don't set it aside for six months and go back to it. Chances are you're not going to be thrilled with what you find when you open the jar. Um, but also use the Glad Press and Seal as soon as you open any kind of paste. Um, it really helps to seal in that moisture. And when you're not using it, keep the lid on it or keep your press and seal on it. You want as little air as possible to get into you, any of your pace. Now, since you mentioned the press and seal, and I've had a few people um, mention that when you put the press and seal on it, do you actually push it in so it's touching the product? No, so be... you want it like just... You know, push it over and like give it a good seal around your edge. Okay. Okay. So if you're wondering why um, press and seal is now going to be sold out everywhere, you can thank yeah. Heather. <laughs> it is a good tip, but really when you're using it, take the bit out that you need and close it up or get your press and seal on there. Good. Any more questions? Nope, that's it for right now. Okay, um, a few more samples for you. So this one I just did, I um, wanted to show you, this is the gold and silver Sizzix paint, just through a stencil on black cardstock, just so you can kind of see like the nice color and dimension you get. I was a little heavy handed in spots, so don't judge me on that. Okay, now this one is super cool. This I is heavy this. Duralar. I know I love this one. So this is done on heavy Duralar um, with a stencil and the chartreuse stencil butter. And it went on like a dream and dried like a dream. It is super cool. So wouldn't this look fantastic over like a dark colored like card front or something? I love it. Or you More could turn nice. it into a shaker. That'd be cool. Yeah. So the Duralar, this is super fun to work with, with your paste and paints. Um, a few more samples. So this was ink blended through a stencil. And then I don't know, can you see the shine on it? Oh, definitely. Yeah, there's a lot of shine on that. So I went back over the stencil with the transparent gloss. Because it dries clear. So just to go over so that again, that, Heather took the to Heather took the stencil, blended her ink blended. through the stencil, right? Dried the ink and then put the stencil back over. Yeah. And then applied the transparent gloss over it and let it dry. And that is an amazing technique. And the uh, Prima 3D gloss gel does the exact same thing. So just so you know. Anything um, that will give you some texture but will dry clear is fabulous over any of your pattern papers or your ink blended backgrounds. Fabulous. 
Okay. Um, another crackle paste. You can't see this one as well. It's um, a black crackle, actually. But how cool is that? Um, this is a stencil butter through, um, I think this was a picket fence stencil. Yeah, it looks I like just picket fence or Lavinia. They're very similar. Yeah, I can't remember. So something like this, you know, you don't have to add much to it. Maybe like a really like a cool, bold word for your card front. Okay, this, this idea is really cool too. So you use your stencil, ink blend in your image, and then go back over one of them to feature with some like a glitter, any kind of like a glitter paste um, that will still show the color through. So a clear glitter. So the fairy dust will do that. Um, the nouveau moonstone will do that. I know that's a favorite of yours, Heather, the Moonstone one from Nuvo. I love Moonstone because you can still see your ink colors behind this one. Um, what else? Oh, here's just a regular um, <clears throat> opaque matte texture paste. And while it was still wet, I went over it with my glitter duster and just sprayed in a little bit of glitter there so it stuck to the paste while it was still wet. Great idea. Yeah. Yeah, what else? Okay, and here's one. Um, so I just took a couple of the paste, just used my spatula to let it dry on this cardstock. And then I thought this would just be super easy then to take a die cut and you could just die cut out like, you know, hello type of thing and add that to your card front. Oh yeah. That's a great idea. Or yeah. even as like a, a, with a shadow die behind a word as well. Yeah. It'd be fabulous. So that is a, a picket fence glaze, paper glaze on the left. Yep. Yeah. And then the other one is yeah. a stencil button from the crafters, the crafters workshop. workshop. Yeah, they're very similar, yeah, so but honestly, the colors they that they offer, are, yeah, the, they're very similar, but the color palettes they both offer are very different, but very similar in, yeah. in texture, yeah. Yeah, so there's some ideas. Okay, so maybe you're wondering, well, how do you apply? Oops, let me solo myself here. So maybe you're wondering, how do you apply a texture paste? Well, let me just grab out some papers here. Let me just show you some tools that you can use. I have two favorite tools for applying a paste. And one of them is a palette knife. Um, my favorite is the offset palette knife. You can't get ones that are straight. I just have more success with the, with the offset one. This is one from Stamperia. Uh, we also have... Uh, the Liquitex one. So you can see this one's a little bit bigger. Um, I prefer the smaller one, but it just depends on personal choice. But I love using a palette knife. But if I have a large stencil uh, and I want to use the entire thing, I will go to my stencil pal. And this is from ThermoWeb, and you actually get two in the pack. They're exactly the same. But this is called the Stencil Pal, and we still have these in stock. And let me just show you how easy it is to use the Stencil Pal. So it is a flexible um, plastic. It's not hard. It is, it is flexible. And like I said, you get two in a pack. Um, I think I left the other one at the store, but this is the one I have at home. So right now I've just got a piece of uh, black uh, media, uh, mixed media paper. I'm going to use my stencil. Now, in order to keep my stencil from moving, because if your stencil moves while you're applying a paste, it's just going to smear. So I'll take some of my uh, best ever craft tape from Spellbinders, and I'm just going to just going to apply some tape. I just want that to stay in place. Here we go. Let me just put that on there. Okay, that's being held down. It's good. Next, I'm going to choose, uh, I'm going to use this Gamboge stencil butter from the Crafters Workshop. 
Let me open that up. I'm going to take my palette knife. I'm going to scoop some of that out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stencil pal, just going to apply it there on the edge. I'm going to kind of spread it. There we go. Oops, make sure it's all on the one side. And now I'm going to take my stencil pal. My product is on the bottom. I'm going to take it and I'm just going to drag it across my stencil and I'm going to go back and I'm going to keep applying and dragging and moving and applying and dragging. So you can see that you can apply a lot of product over a large space in very little time. I may not have put enough on there. So I'm going to go back with my palette knife, pick up a bit more, apply it there. And just keep dragging and applying it until I get everything covered that I want. And you don't need to press very hard. Like I'm hardly putting any pressure on this at all. I'm just trying to apply a nice, even coat through that stencil. And just when I think I have enough, I run out again. Oops. Hello to everyone who has joined in the last little while. Welcome. This is Monday Night Live, and it's Heather and I from the Paper and Ink Boutique. Probably could have chosen a smaller stencil for this because I'd be done already. Okay, so when I get everything covered, I'm going to do one final drag, just drag off all that extra. And now I'm going to take my pot and I'm going to scrape off all that excess because I don't want to waste that. There we go. Scrape that off back into my jar. And before I do anything, I want to clean off that stencil pal because I need it clean for the next time I want to use it. Don't let your product dry on there because it will be harder to clean off. So you can see how easy and fast that cleans up. And then what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to slowly remove this tape. And that stencil, there we go. Now you can see I did go a little bit over. If I really wanted to be very neat about it is I probably would have covered the entire thing with tape, but something like this, I'm probably gonna end up cutting out anyways. But there, you can see how quick and easy that was to apply with my stencil pal. Any other tips that you wanted to share, Heather, on application there we are there's heather back on screen uh so <clears throat> what i generally use when i'm using stencils whether i'm ink blending through them or using paste i generally use my wendy vecchi uh make art station it's a magnetic surface and i just have a piece of splat mat that i cut down um that kind of protects my surface so this is my favorite thing just because I like um, the option of when I don't necessarily want to tape everything down, I can just use my magnets too. Okay, so that's an option as well. And a couple of my favorite tools, I really like the Nouveau uh, silicone spatulas. And then, of course, when I'm using a larger stencil or want to cover a larger area, I do love my stencil pal. Yeah, the stencil pal is really great. I really love it. And I find that I get not only are, is it quick to apply your stencil paste or butters or whatever you're using, um, but you also get a nice even coat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I find when I use my spatula, sometimes it's not as even as what I like it. So that's what, another reason why I love the stencil pal. Yeah, and I find sometimes with a, a spatula or like a smaller uh, tool, sometimes too you can be a little 
heavy handed with it and you end up pushing product underneath your stencil. So the yes. stencil pal definitely gives you like a better even coverage. Yes, that's absolutely right. And I tend to also be uh, a little heavy handed and know exactly what that, what that looks like. And then you lift off your stencil and it's leaked underneath and then you're like, well, darn it. <laughs> Well, darn it. Yes, I have lots of those. I have a pile of those. Okay, now, um, oh, see what Heather's doing. She's masking off. That is what we would call masking. So she is using just um, just some regular run-of-the-mill um, post-it post notes, right? Yes, or use scrap paper, your copy paper, whatever. But I've already inked these and put the transparent gloss over them, and they're dry, so I don't want to get you know, any more on there because these ones are good now. So I'm just masking those just in case. Okay. So that green one that you're showing that was inked. Yep. So this is just uh, rustic wilderness oxide ink. I'm working on a craft paper. And what, so over, what, take, what paste are you going to apply? I am going to use the transparent gloss. So you can see what uh, color it looks like when it comes out. So it actually is white when you use it. And for this, because it's a small um, area, I'm going to um, use the paste. I'm just using one of my silicone spatulas. So like Julia said, be light handed with any kind of paste or uh, paints, because you really don't want to be disappointed when you've pushed it underneath your stencil. So like with a lot of things, when you're working with a stencil, always, apply a thin coat. You can always apply more, but yeah. once you've put it on and it's leaked underneath your stencil, it's a little harder to take that off. And with any of your um, applicators, your brushes, your stencil pal, your stencils, anytime you use a paste, wipe it off right away. If you've learned from your own mistakes, if you let things dry on there, they're huge pain to clean after the fact. So when I'm using uh, stencils and paste right beside me, I actually have a dish with hot soapy water in it. So as soon as I'm done with my stencil, I just drop it in there. And then when I'm all done, then I can go finish cleaning everything up. But at least this way, none of your um, mediums dry onto your stencils and this will keep them nice and clean and last longer. Great advice. Okay, so the next thing I was going to do, so this is already starting to dry clear. You can see that it's not as white anymore. I wanted to add a, a bit of glitter to this one. So all I've done is I use some of my just regular glitter. So you could use your Frosted Crystal or any of your other Sizzix products too or something like this. And I have it in my glitter duster. And I was just going to give it a little dusting of glitter so that this one image in particular on this card front is going to have a little bling to it. And that's can that. You, can you hold that glitter duster up to the camera? It's so this, this, this is a tool that came out, I want to say like three years ago. Yeah, probably. Um, and it is absolutely fabulous. I love using it. And any fine glitter you don't have to use the distress glitter but any fine glitter you can put in there and you just squeeze it and it just adds this amazing glitter to any of your wet mediums wow yeah, look it, at that. that really pops now yeah so it'll when it dries clear you'll still see the color from the stenciled image behind and the glitter Absolutely wonderful. That's gorgeous. Yeah, and then I'll trim this down, add a sentiment. Um, yeah, good to go. So um, one thing that I also want to talk about, because sometimes people don't realize that you can take, oops, let me go back to my camera here, that you can take a texture paste, a modeling paste, a crackle paste, uh, a range of paste. These are white. These are going to be opaque, but you can take um, a reinker. You can take a paint and you can tint these 
any color that you want. Some people don't realize that you can do that. So when I want, say I've got a texture paste and I want, you know, I want it to be yellow or I want it to be purple or whatever. Well, how you do that? So I would take a little bit out. Here we go. I'm just going to take a little bit out onto my craft mat. Now, I don't have to use an ink. I don't have to use a re-inker. You can really use anything. So say I want, I love this yellow. I love the gamboge. I love this ocean blue. This one from the Crafters Workshop. Oops. Crafters Workshop is a gorgeous color. So say I want this, but I want it with my texture paste. This one is very light and airy. So, oops, I'm not going to take that one. Let me take this. Maybe I want to take a little bit of this and I want to mix it. So you can just take those two products. You can mix it together. Now I've got the best of this. I've got the color. I've got the sparkle. But now I've got the light and fluffiness of this texture paste. So don't be afraid to mix your products. I'm just going to grab a, just grab a stencil here. So let me pick that up. Make sure it's mixed. I like to think of our cra us crafters as like, um, you know, we're like scientists mixing our potions together of our different products. I know people will um, ask us, it's like, well, can I take this and mix it with that? It's like, of course, it's not like you're going to, it's not going to blow up in your face or anything. So just go ahead and mix it. And sometimes I do it and I'm surprised by the results. I almost went and scraped that back in there. No, that would be bad. So let me scrape this up and I'm just going to show you. So like I said, I love this, but when you put it down and it dries, it's going to be shiny. I mixed it with the matte texture paste, the opaque texture paste from Ranger. And now I've got all the gorgeousness of this one, but now it's matte. It's not shiny. So maybe there are some circumstances where you love this, but eh, it's a little bit shiny for me. I don't want the shine. Mix it with a matte texture paste, and then you get something a little bit different. So I'm just going to wipe this up. And that goes the same with a crackle paste. Maybe you've got a white crackle paste, but you're like, you know what? A brown crackle would look fantastic. Then go ahead and mix it with whatever color you want to get the color of texture paste that you would like. So again, there is my mix of the Crafters Workshop Stencil Butter with the matte texture paste from Ranger. So do not be afraid of being experimental and um, making up your own colors. Okay, I'm gonna head, I'm going to put it back to Heather because it looks like she's doing something there. Okay, so on this background, I had already um, done an ink blend you see it there? It looks like it's lagging. Yep, I can see it. It's all good. Okay, and then I was just going to go back over it uh, with the stencil, and then I re-inked it, like I did it again, so that I get the grid, okay? And then I was just going to try the fairy dust on top of it. Now, the thing to note that, too, if you're going to apply any paste over an inked background is you have to make sure your ink is dry. or else it will just be a tinted mess with whatever you try to apply over top of it. So, and I'm not even going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do something random. So you see with this fairy dust one from Lawn Fun, you get a super nice shimmer in there. And this one spreads so nice. Same with the Nouveau one. The, these ones spread really great. I don't think I've used that one much, but that is a really great paste. It is. And I have... No, I uh, Go ahead. 
Oh, sorry. I was going to say I have the gold somewhere too, but of course I couldn't find it. But that one looks fabulous on like darker colors or whatever. It looks really cool. Or like a Christmas page, you know, the stencil of like an ornament or a star, you know, you can add little bits. It doesn't have to be like a full thing, right? You can just add um, like embellishments or whatever to. Oh, gorgeous. So you get the shine and the glitter, but it doesn't compete with the cool, you know, colors of your background. And what did, what inks did you use for the background? So I'll, actually on this one, I used uh, Chip Sapphire, Villainous Potion, and Black Soot. And was that oxide or ink? Yep, all oxide. Oxides are my very favorite for uh, ink blending. So that's really fabulous because you know that the oxides give you a very matte, chalky look. Yeah. And so you might like the colors and you love the blendability of the oxides, but maybe you do want to add a bit of a, a pop of, of bling and sparkle. So that is really fabulous. And then you can see the contrast between the background of the stencil there. Yeah. Very matte. And then, wow, those shapes from the stencil really pop. So something else I want to notice, uh, or I want to point out too, this is only an 80 pound cardstock that I used for this one. And I can already tell that before, like when I picked it up, it was like, oh yeah, this is only 80 pound because it wants to warp a little bit. So if you're doing that, um, any kind of paste, um, paints, anything with a wet medium, um, we totally suggest more of a mixed media paper, like 110 pound or the foundations paper from Vicky Booten or the super stock heavy um, mixed media paper. It makes a huge difference in how nice and flat things will dry for you as well. Not to say you can't use the 80 pound, but if you are making a card, you will probably have to apply um, adhesive, like a, a double-sided adhesive to that yes. entire panel to get it to lay flat. completely flat. Yeah, not yeah. like just the outside edge. You would need to have like the entire thing with adhesive. Yeah. So just something so, to note. I Yes, and, don't, and also don't use when, Heather, when Heather said she was using, um, here, I'm just going to do this. When Heather said she was using the oxides, um, also uh, something that people should know is those are um, uh, water reactive. And so when you put a stencil paste or a texture paste over top of those, um, even though you dry it, they're never permanent. So when you add another... Um, paste on top of it, it's going to reactivate those colors as well. So um, if you are trying it and then all of a sudden you you put your texture paste and you pull it up and you see purple on your palette knife, don't freak out. It's just because that those oxides are water reactive and that's just that's just what they're what they're made to do. So yeah. Okay, what are you gonna show us now, Heather? Oh, I just wanted to show um the challenge this week, Tammy's um, inspiration challenge is all about chipboard. So I had grabbed a piece of chipboard and with my finger, I actually just scooped out little bits and used my paint or my stencil butters to create a really cool um, effect and color on my chipboard. So that's another way to use your paste. You can use anything like that over your chipboard too. Yeah, we've really been focusing on, you know, using it through stencils, but you do not have to apply it through a stencil. Um, no. Like Heather said, use it on your chipboard and just, you know, using either a, a, a stencil brush or your finger or a blending tool and just dab it on a piece of chipboard um, yeah. and you get a really great effect. Like same, you just use it on your cardstock, let it dry, and then you can die cut it. You can use your punches whatever right it doesn't it's not just a stencil thing or a card front thing it's multi multi-purpose it's just you know the added texture that it gives and whether it be shiny or matte there's just so many options right yeah so it's really great that heather's here because heather is a a um primarily here just wait i'm going to let's do this heather's primarily a card maker and a scrapbooker and she used paste on cards and scrapbook layouts. 
I mostly mix media and I use texture paste and butters on art journal pages. So I want you to know that whatever type of craft that you do, don't be afraid to use these products because they can look amazing on any craft product or craft project that you do. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't know. It's really messy. And um, it can be, but Heather is also one of those people. She doesn't do messy, right? I don't love messy. I like some control. <laughs> right. <laughs> so if Heather can use pace, anyone can use pace. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Did you have anything and else I love you wanted to share? Did you have anything else you wanted to share, Heather? I don't know. I don't think so. Does anybody have any questions about the pace or how they may be different or? Okay. Here's what, Oh, Lorene, if your texture paste has gotten a bit dried up, is there a way to refresh it? Um, in my experience, I have not had a uh, great success. I have looked online and I have seen people, and uh, this was with some Dina Wakely, no, not Dina Wakely, Diana Reevely paints when it used to come in the paint pots and people would take their, um, their distilled water and spray it in. Um, I didn't have any success with that. Uh, other people did. Um, now, I have heard that distress refresher some people have also had some success with that. So Distress Refresher is a product that comes in a spray bottle and um, originally was designed to work with the Distress products, the pads, the, um, um, yeah, mostly the pads, but I have heard that it works with the paints as well. I don't know what's in it, but uh, I, I'm not going to guarantee that it'll work for you, but I have heard Yes, Wendy says that she uses Distress Refresh and it works. So there you go. There you go. I know it works for some people. Maybe mine was too far gone. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I have heard I that think, Distress Refresh works. And I think the thing is just try a little bit, mix it up, put, you know, seal it back up and see if it can gain that moisture back. But if it's already dried anyways, you've got nothing to lose by trying. Right? Okay, here, I'm going to put this on. Um, what do you purchase to get started with mixed media? Oh, Heather, that is that is a very deep and complicated problem, <laughs> or not problem, question. Um, do you know, when I started mixed media, I started just with paint, paint and stencils. That's all I used. And I didn't really add texture paste until I was comfortable with what I was using. So I always tell people, if you're starting with mixed media, don't think that you have to um, invest a lot of money, start with what you're comfortable with. And you may, you, <laughs> Julie says the whole store. Yeah. And maybe that's <laughs> why I own a store. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just start with what you're comfortable with. I would start with inks and paints and, you know, get comfortable with that and, and, uh, and be, be happy with, with that. But, you know, a stencil, some paint, paint brushes. Um, and then when you're comfortable with that, add in a texture paste. And like what I would start with here, let me go back to my, this one. This is a great way to start is just an opaque matte texture paste because you can add ink color or paint to this. And you can use this in several different ways in several different colors. Um, so don't think you need to invest in, in all of the things. Um, don't think you need to do this because really just start with one, just start with one. And if you have inks and paints, use it to tint this and, um, yeah, and you'll be quite happy with it. And when you're happy with this, maybe, you know, venture out and add a stencil butter or add a crackle paste, um, yeah, Julie, she uses an old gift card to drag medium through a stencil. And that's great too. Like old credit card, gift card, um, hotel key cards. I have a whole box of those. And what's great about those is when they get grungy and gross, you just toss them out. You just toss them, right? So I think that's how I started too before I wanted to invest in, in like tools. 
is I used old credit cards and hotel key cards and things like that. And um, yeah, then you're not feeling bad about it, not cleaning it. Um, then you can just take it and toss it in the garbage and you're, you're not out any money. So yeah. Perfect. Is there any other questions? This has been a very informative, um, very informative evening. Um, this is going to be, it's recorded. It will be posted to our Facebook page. It will also be on our YouTube channel. So if you're not following the paper and ink on YouTube, head over there, find us on YouTube, post your questions. Like maybe, you know, at 3 a.m. you wake up and you've got a burning question that you have about mix at about um, pace and stuff. And you just have to ask Heather and I. Go on, keep commenting because one of us will see it and we will um, we will go in and um, answer your question. I just need to do this because what is Heather doing with that one? Are I you just wanted to show. So there's quite a glare there. But this one I was showing with this amazing, what is this, chartreuse uh, stencil butter on the Duralar. So acetate, but the Duralar is nice because it's nice and thick. It doesn't, you know, it didn't work. So if you're using something like that for a card front, then just add like a die cut sentiment, attach it to your card, like boom, done. So fun. Fast, easy, stunning. Yeah. Yeah. Use your stencils, use your pace. Like it's just, well, it's addictive as we all know. So. Yeah. And that's, that's another um, good thing is if you're going to get your pace out, make several backgrounds at the same time. Don't, don't feel like you need to like hoard the pace. Don't, don't hoard the pace because like we said, they will eventually dry out and be no good. So maybe you love the look of it on the Duralar. So you buy some sheets of Duralar and make, you know, um, five, six, eight, ten backgrounds and just keep them in your stash. And when you need a card, you need one really quick, flip through, grab one out, add a sentiment on it. Boom. Card is made. Yeah, if you're going to get messy and, you know, use your spatulas and, you know, need all the things, definitely make it worth your while and your time. I would definitely do more than one for sure. Right. Yeah, that's and that's a great thing to share is like if you're like Heather and if you're going to get messy, you only want to get messy one night of the week. So you might as well get all the messiness yep. out of the way, make all of the backgrounds and then make the mess you have you have all of those things available and when you need a card background or you need some inspiration, then it's all done for you. So yeah. And that's yeah. a way that you can use up a lot of product and you're not going to waste it like six months from now when you go and open it and you're like, well, darn it, it's all dry. So yeah, really great to, to sit down one night and just play with your mediums and get them out and, and, um, and make a bunch of backgrounds. Uh, Lorene's asking, does alcohol ink blend well in paste? Um, I have, I have done it. Um, I do find that it will make your pace a little bit more runny. So uh, if you are going to do it, I suggest just adding a drop of alcohol ink to start with. Don't be like, you know, shaking lots and lots on there. Start with one little drop, mix it in, maybe add one more drop. So just be a little bit conservative of those things. And that's the same if you're using uh, re-anchors or um, yeah, if you're using any of your re-anchors to tint your paste, just start with one drop. It, it really does not take a whole lot to tint a paste. Uh, that would be my suggestion is start um, with just a drop or two because uh, you don't want your paste getting too runny that it's now not going to work for what you want it to. And using uh, the re-anchors, you'll be much happier because these are concentrated. So you'll get a much nicer color with less product using a re-anchor. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to put it back over to Heather because she's got a couple of things there. And don't forget your other... Um you know, everything else in your supply, it, it never hurts to try it. There's no right or wrong. If you're digging out your pace and you've got your knives out, you know, use your surfaces and just experiment, put some paste down Add you can use some acrylic paint in there or like a glossy spray. You don't know till you try it. So just put some down, mix it up and see what it, you know, you come up with. It's, 
so versatile. And nothing is ever ruined, right? Like no. even if you, even if your paste ends up being maybe a little bit too runny to put through a stencil, grab a brush and brush it on a background and use it to make die cuts. So never think yeah. that you've ruined something beyond that you can use it. You'll just be like, oh, well, now I can't put it through a stencil. It's a little too runny. Grab a paintbrush, paint it on a background. It would make a great art journal background. It would still make a really great card background. It would make a great um, background just for making die cut sentiment. So yeah, don't be afraid. Yeah. yeah, try it in the name of science is what Julie says. Yes, try it in the name of science and then share your, your results, your scientific results in our inspiration group. Because, you know, uh, Heather and I have both been crafters for you know, I'm not going to age us, but it's been a long time. And, <laughs> and so we've tried a lot of a things, but it's amazing. In our inspiration group, um, people will come up with, with techniques and I'll be like, why did I never think of that? I haven't, why did I never try that? So yeah, I know it's, um, I love our, our community of people because you all have such great ideas. So it's fabulous. So if you have tried pace in a different way um, that even we haven't mentioned, be sure to share that with us because um, we're always learning too. So yeah, I'm going to remove that. There's Heather and I again. Yes, Julie, we can definitely learn from each other. Yes. So um, I want to thank Absolutely. you all for joining us. There's like 31 eyeballs on us right now here, Heather, 31 people watching. So I want to thank everyone awesome. for joining Yay. us. And um, learning a little bit more about Heather, who is, she's not only on my creative team, but she is also our assistant store manager at the store. So she has her hands in all parts of the business. So if you have visited the store, more than likely you have um, had a chance to talk to Heather or Heather has helped you. So um, yes, you're very welcome. Everyone's saying thank you so much for all the techniques and you're very welcome. Thank you again. I can't and wait to do this again. Yeah, definitely. We will definitely do this again. And if you still have questions, don't forget, you can put them in the comments field and we will try and answer them as quickly as possible. So thank you very much, everyone. And don't forget, I'll be back here next Monday night. I don't know what's happening, but I'll be back here next Monday night and we'll do it all over again. So thank you very much for joining me, Heather. Thank you for having me. Bye, everybody.